after the Lord was baptized, the heavens were opened, and the Spirit descended upon him like the dove, and the voice of the Father thundered, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. I will welcome you to this live stream mass at 11 o'clock, which you're offering for the repose of the soul of Nellie Irwin, and Father Rajesh will celebrate mass privately today for the repose of the soul of Amalia Young. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Uh, if you're tuning in for the first time uh, in a week and you're wondering why I'm in St. Mary Magdalene Hall, uh, it's the only building uh, on the estate here that we have any heating. As you know from the newsletter, the heating in the church has gone in both churches and in the presbytery. Uh, it's only five degrees in St. Mary Magdalene Church at the moment, and it's only ten degrees in the presbytery, so it's very, very cold. So I've come into the hall, and we'll do the best we can for you with this celebration uh, from this temporary altar. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come to us in word and in sacrament to strengthen us and make us holy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who when Christ had been baptized in the river Jordan, and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved Son, grant that your children by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well pleasing to you, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. And our readings are the alternative readings given for Year B. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. O come to the water, all you who are thirsty. Though you have no money, come. Buy corn without money, and eat, and at no cost wine and milk. Why spend money on what is not bread, your wages on what fails to satisfy? Listen, listen to me, and you will have good things to eat, and rich food to enjoy. Pay attention, come to me, listen, and your soul will live. With you I will make an everlasting covenant, out of the favours promised to David. See, I have made you a witness to the peoples, a leader and a master of the nations. See, you will summon a nation you never knew. Those unknown will come hurrying to you for the sake of the Lord your God, of the Holy One of Israel, who will glorify you. Seek the Lord while he is still to be found. 
Call to him while he is still near. Let the wicked man abandon his way, the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn back to the Lord who will take pity on him, to our God who is rich in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways. It is the Lord who speaks. Yes, the heavens are as high above earth as my ways are above your ways, my thoughts above your thoughts. Yes, as the rain and snow come down from the heavens and do not return without watering the earth, making it yield and giving growth to provide seed for the sower and bread for the eating. So the word that goes from my mouth does not return to me empty without carrying out my will and succeeding in what it was sent to do. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the first letter of St. John. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ has been begotten by God, and whoever loves the Father that begot him loves the child whom he begets. We can be sure that we love God's children if we love God himself and do what he commanded us. This is what loving God is, keeping his commandments. And his commandments are not difficult, because anyone who has been begotten by God has already overcome the world. This is the victory over the world, our faith. Who can overcome the world? Only the man who believes that Jesus is the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who came by water and blood, not with water only, but with water and blood, with the Spirit as another witness, since the Spirit is the truth, so that there are three witnesses, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and all of them agree, we accept the testimony of human witness, that God's testimony is much greater, and this is God's testimony, given as evidence for his Son. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
coming towards him and said, This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. In the course of his preaching, John the Baptist said, Someone is following me, someone who is more powerful than I am, and I am not fit to kneel down and undo the strap of his sandals. I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. It was at this time that Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee, and was baptised in the Jordan by John. No sooner had he come out of the water than he saw the heavens torn apart, and the Spirit, like a dove, descending on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. My favour rests on you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I've been asked the following question uh, quite a number of times already in my priesthood. How much does it cost to have Mass said, Father? The Church does not charge for the sacraments, but welcomes you to make a donation so to provide the priests with a small income. And so indeed, I'd like to also say many thanks on behalf of Rav Rajesh and myself for your very generous Christmas offering. The principle is that grace is freely given. And so even the weekly offertory, which supports the maintenance and mission of the church, uh, should not be placed directly in front of the altar, uh, lest we think, mistakenly think, we might be paying for Mass. It is Jesus Christ who paid the price of our redemption, not in silver or gold, but by his precious blood. This life of faith that we live, it's always an invitation, an invitation to seek the Lord. The Gospel readings in those weekdays after the Christmas octave demonstrated how Andrew and John were invited to come and see, to come and encounter the Lord. A transformative experience, which for us leads to a further invitation. Come to the waters, come to the waters of baptism. For Isaiah's time, it was a call to return home after the exile. But it was also a call to conversion and repentance. It remains a call to all people to seek the Lord and return home to the heavenly Jerusalem, to leave behind everything that anchors us to this world, most especially sin. Baptism is our first reconciliation, the washing away of original sin, and for adults, personal sins also. Sin keeps, keeps God distant, whereas reconciliation brings God closer. Forgiveness of sin is a fruit of the new and eternal covenant. The cross represented before us in this very Mass, and it's a covenant sealed in the blood of the Lamb. It's a pledge of our future salvation. God tells us, take and eat. Money cannot buy this divine nourishment, 
God freely sustains us in word and in sacrament, strengthening us and making us holy. But remember, God and sin do not reside together. For the Incarnation, Our Lady is immaculately conceived to make her a worthy vessel to hold our Lord. In the same way, baptism and reconciliation bring us to a state of grace, ready to receive the Lord in the sacraments. If we receive the sacraments of confirmation, or either of the sacraments of vocation, marriage or holy orders, and we receive them in a state of mortal sin, they will be validly conferred upon us, but the fruitfulness is locked until we are restored to that state of grace through confession. With Holy Communion, reception of the Lord in a state of mortal sin will not only dishonour the Lord, but as we've learned from the very beginning, will most likely damage our immortal soul. This does not surprise a person of faith, well it shouldn't do, because we understand what John the Beloved Apostle says about love equaling the keeping of God's commandments. A child loves their father and listens to him, and in doing so shares in Christ's victory over sin and death. Love of God necessarily leads us on to love of neighbour, because if we have become children of God in baptism, other people must be our brothers and sisters in Christ. And so as this Christmas season ends, our celebrations will all be meaningless without our testimony of God as Emmanuel. A saviour has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord. He is God. And we are to announce both the birth of the saviour and the saving act of the cross and resurrection. Jesus did not become God at his baptism, but it was a revealing to us of his true identity. The Holy Spirit descending upon him at his baptism does not make him God, he already is, but it is an epiphany to us that the Holy Spirit will descend upon us when we share in Christ's baptism, when we become a new creation and temple for the Holy Spirit. If we allow God to abide in us, we will abide in God for all eternity. Jesus has no need of repentance or conversion to the Father's will, but by accepting this baptism, he gives us a model of humility, an act of solidarity with the people he has come to save. And his baptism marks the start of his pastoral ministry, now taken up by the church. And in making disciples through baptism, the church continues this mission and ministry of reconciliation, gathering the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honour the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in the waters of the Jordan you revealed the signs and wonders of a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us. And by the spirits descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ your servant has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God, and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Petrus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Christophanus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept the sublation of our service, that of your whole family, Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice, in his holy and venerable hands, 
And once more giving th you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, the place of refreshment, life, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, for whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Rohem and Rehem and Rehem, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Behold the one of whom John said, I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. Let us pray. Nourish with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'll do my best to keep you updated on the heating situation as the week goes on. Uh, the temperature is climbing a little bit according to the forecast for Monday, drops again on Tuesday. Uh, it's got a long way to go up before the church is going to be warm enough to use with, without heating. So let's hope the parts arrive uh, very soon. Uh, we've got contingency plans in place if we have to move uh, Wednesday's funeral for Lem Murphy. Uh, we've, we've got a church available in Eastbourne, the committal is at Eastbourne Crematorium. Eternal rest grant unto Lem, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. We'll make a decision tomorrow afternoon whether the funeral needs to move to the contingency or not. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Oh.